We've looked at a few different applications for partial derivatives. Now we want to look at an application for double integrals, which is in the form of finding the average value of a function. So for some given function, f of x, y, where x is bounded between a and b, and y is bounded between c and d, we can calculate the average value as 1 over b minus a times d minus c, so 1 over just the difference of the range of values for both x and y. And then we would have the double integral of f of x, y, which we could then integrate with respect first to x and then to y. So if we integrate with respect to x, that interior integral would be from a to b. The outer integral would be from c to d. Or we could reverse that order. Could just as easily write this as 1 over b minus a times d minus c times the integral of a to b, the integral from c to d of f of x, y, dy, dx. So the order of integration isn't important, whether we integrate with respect to x or y first, as long as we keep the right upper and lower bounds paired with the same, the right variable. So in example six, we want to find the average value of, of a given function, uh, x squared plus y squared over the rectangle r equals this kind of long notation here. What we're interested though, and is just the pieces of information that tell us about the upper and lower bounds for x and the upper and lower bounds for y. So x is going to range from 0 to 2, y is going to range from 0 to 2, which means our integral in this case would be 1 over 2 minus 0 times 2 minus 0, integrating from 0 to 2, from 0 to 2. In this case, the order of those integration statements don't make a lot of difference since we have the same values. x squared plus y squared dx dy. So we can evaluate this double integral by asking Wolfram alpha to integrate 1 fourth times x squared plus y squared for x equals 0 to 2 and y equals 0 to 2. So we're going to integrate that expression out front, the 1 over b minus a times d minus c, which in this case just becomes 1 fourth, the function, and then the range of values for both x and y. So in this case, we get about 2.667 or 8 thirds. So depending on if we want that answer as an approximate or as a fraction. So our exact result here would be 8 thirds or about 2.67, depending on where we want it around that decimal. So that's really just a theoretical problem to see how we use this technique um, of evaluating double integrals with Wolfram Alpha. Now we want to look at an actual application question. So the total number of times produced by a certain manufacturer each month is given by this function Q, where X is the monthly capital in $1,000 units, Y is the labor and worker hours. Uh, let's see. Monthly capital investment must be between $15,000 and $19,000. Monthly labor hours must be between 4,300 and 4,900 worker hours. So first let's identify the different variables. So Y is labor and work hours. So that means y is going to be bounded between 4,300 and 4,900. x is the monthly capital, so it's going to be between 15,000 and 19,000, but x is also in thousand dollar units, so what we could say is that 15 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 19. So these numbers representing 19,000 and 15,000. So to write our expression for the average value, this would be 1 over 19 minus 15 
times 4,900 minus 4,300. We would have the double integral of 20x to the 0 0.8, y to the 0 0.2, and then we could choose to integrate with respect to x or y first. We'll go with x for no particular reason, just to choose one. So that interior integral would be from 15 to 19, and then the outer integral with respect to y would be from 4,300 to 4,900. And that's not very clear. Let me rewrite that. So we would set up that double integral, and then we can turn to Wolfram Alpha to again evaluate that for us. So we'll update the function first, which we could type as 1 over, and if we open up a set of parentheses here first, then we can evaluate 19 minus 15 in another set of parentheses times 4,900 minus 4,300 in another set of parentheses. So we have the product of those two differences in parentheses under 1 to kind of get the format of the syntax down for that fraction. And that will be times this quantity 20x to the 0 0.8, y to the 0 0.2. And then we're going to evaluate that for x equals... 15 to 19, and y equals 4,300 to 4,900. So this is an important one to check and be sure that this statement makes sense, especially when we get all those added parentheses in there. But we could take this 19 minus 15, 4,900 minus 4,300, since that's just constant multiple, pull that out in front of this integral expression so that we can see that it would match up with exactly what we wrote before. And we get this result of 1,041.67, or rounding that to the nearest whole number, average number of units produced is approximately 1,042.